Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Saturday. I'm glad you're here. Big show, as far as I'm concerned. Really a two-part show. In this evening's show, I'm going to focus on the totalitarianism that is the Democrat Party, and I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to do the same thing on tomorrow night's show, Sunday's show, but this show's going to focus on Donald Trump, and tomorrow night's show will focus on Benjamin Netanyahu, for purposes of my monologues. So very, very important. So the premise is the Democrat Party is a party of tyranny that practices totalitarianism, despite talking about democracy. That's all right. Xi talks about democracy. All the biggest thugs, dictators, genocidal maniacs always use the word democracy, or they act on behalf of the people. The Democrat Party's learned from them. Let me make the point. All these lawsuits against Donald Trump, 91 felony charges. This isn't a coincidence. This isn't an accident. Either they're all talking to one another, or they all read the tea leaves, they watch the news. These bombs that they've dropped on Trump left and right to try and bankrupt him, to try and make it impossible to run a campaign, to try and get him convicted of some ridiculous felony. Every one of these charges, I'm the real legal analyst, okay? Every one of these charges is bogus, all 91 of them. Not one of them should have ever been brought. Not one of them. And my point to you is this. What is it that they want? They want Donald Trump in prison. You don't bring 91 felonies for the fun of it. Not just to get a conviction. They want Donald Trump in prison. And what happens if they get a conviction here, a conviction there, convictions, and gets in front of these Democrat judges? Well, what happens if he's convicted? You're going to send him to jail? And if they send him to jail, what happens then? Well, Joe Biden might be the only candidate running for president, other than a few third-party candidates. Can you run for president from prison? I suppose so. But you kind of have your hands tied behind your back, don't you? So the goal of the Democrat Party, the goal of Joe Biden, who's behind it all, he's aware of it. His people are out there. They've communicated with a number of these different prosecutorial offices. They don't put a stop to it. It's all bogus. It's all totalitarian. What is the goal? The goal is a one-candidate race, one-party rule. You didn't think it could happen? It's happening right in front of your eyes. Let's take a look at what this totalitarian Democrat Party has been up to. Impeachment number one when the House was controlled by Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats. They tried to impeach him on Russian collusion. They tried. They had hearings and all the rest. Then they see this phone call that Trump himself released, leaks coming out of the White House. They take a sentence completely out of context, and they impeach him with barely any hearings. They impeach him on a sentence that wasn't criminal in nature, nothing. And, of course, it goes to the Senate, where he is found not guilty. Then they impeach him again. For what? After January 6, he's leaving office. He didn't call in the military. He didn't call in anybody to prevent a peaceful transfer of power. They impeach him while he's getting ready to leave for office. And while he's a private citizen at Mar-a-Lago, while he's a private, they vote to impeach him, and they hold a trial in the Senate, never done before in American history, ever. Based on what? Insurrection. Well, where's the evidence? They didn't hold a hearing. They didn't have any facts. They didn't ask a question. They just said he did it. They rammed through this impeachment. They ram it to the Senate. Because why? Because they're trying to destroy him. It's not on behalf of the country. It's not because of a so-called insurrection. That's impeachment number two. Now, we have number three, the whole Russia collusion issue. They launch a criminal investigation. Schumer and the others pressured the Department of Justice to appoint a special prosecutor, and unfortunately, they buckled over there because they knew it would bog down President Trump for years. The job of a special prosecutor is to focus like a laser on one person, on one issue. It's not like a typical U.S. attorney's office that has a thousand issues. And it was based on fabricated information created by the Hillary Clinton or paid for it by the Hillary Clinton campaign, supported and promoted by the FBI and our intelligence agencies, with the knowledge of, we now know, of Barack Obama and Joe Biden and others in the Obama administration. We've never seen anything like this. The result was no charges. Why? Because he didn't do anything wrong. That's why. 
criminal investigations, depositions, subpoenas, warrants, nothing. Then we have this New York Attorney General. She is a radical reprobate who runs for office saying she's going to get Trump. That should be enough to disbar her. The problem is it's in New York. Who controls the bar in New York? That's right, her party. Like-minded radicals. She should have been disbarred. And what does she do? She's doing everything she can to bankrupt Trump. U.S. Attorney's Office said there's no case here. Her predecessor, another radical, but he said there's no case here. She said, I'll make a case here. And the case is a consumer fraud statute that doesn't require fraud, that has absolutely nothing to do with anything Donald Trump did. Donald Trump not only didn't commit fraud, he made money for the banks. He paid all his taxes, everything, not only on time, sometimes before time. And she digs this up, and they say, oh, we got something, a phony law with a, with a crummy, radical, elected Democrat nitwit of a judge, and now he's on line for half a billion dollars? trying to break them. They tried to take his businesses away. So an appellate judge said, not so fast. I'll put that on stay. Why? Why are they trying to do this? Why do you think? And then we have this Soros Manhattan DA, Bragg, a complete moron, in my view. What does he do? He takes two laws, maybe three, tries to work them over to create a federal felony, which then creates a state felony for what? For nothing for a bookkeeping issue. What happens there? Oh, we have another elected Democrat judge. So rather than saying, you know, this is crap, let's throw it out. Even the Democrat legal analysts on CNN say it's crap. But no, 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 we're going to go forward with that. We just need one conviction on one count. He's got like 40 counts, Trump. It's not hush money. It's a non-disclosure agreement. Every media outlet reporting on this has entered into non-disclosure agreements. Is that hush money? No, it's not hush money. Every corporation in America has. Every business has. Married couples that divorce, they do the same thing. No, it's hush money. Got to make it sound very devious. He didn't break any law, nor did his businesses as relates to this. So now they're bogged down in Manhattan. Then we go to Atlanta. A RICO statute. RICO has nothing to do with challenging an election. Oh, but they had a separate slate of electors. We'll call them fake electors. No, we'll call them a separate slate of electors. The same thing they did in 1876, the same thing they did, I think, it was 1960 in Hawaii. If you're challenging the election results in a state, and if that goes all the way to the archivist of the United States who collects the electoral votes and then presents them to Congress when it meets to count them, if you don't have an alternative slate, you have no challenge. There's nothing to replace them. This is history. And so what do they do? In Atlanta, they criminalized the entire process of challenging an election. Well, he called XYZ and said, are you sure we don't have the votes? You sure we can't find the votes? He didn't say create votes. He didn't say manufacture votes. He said, don't we have any votes somewhere? Are we sure we checked everywhere? Oh, that's a crime. No, it's not. We also have the issue there whether a local DA who's corrupt, who's unethical, and all the rest has the authority to bring charges that affect a federal election. A judge already ruled she does, but she doesn't. Let's continue. Washington, D.C., Garland appoints a hack, a prosecutor who was humiliated by a Supreme Court in an 8-0 to decision when he targets and goes after the former governor of Virginia. Now, that should have been a warning that you don't appoint somebody like that with a major sensitive case like this. But for Garland, it was a resume enhancer. Why? Because Biden made it clear to the New York Times through his aides that he was sick and tired of Merrick Garland, a former judge, acting like a judge, a curious judge rather than a prosecutor. Garland got the message. He hires the hack, and they go full bore, January 6th. So it must have been very, very terrible. It must have been really horrific what Trump did. I'm sure he charged him with insurrection. No. Sedition? No. Well, the media keeps saying it was an insurrection and Trump committed sedition, but he didn't. Oh, well, then we have the, the Ku Klux Klan Act to help us, 1871. We just figured out that exists. And we have the Enron Act. That has nothing to do with it, but we'll use it. And then, of course, we have this federal contractor law that's really intended to, to uh, prosecute federal contractors who break the law. Well, we'll use them all against Trump. Really? That's how serious your case is? They keep throwing around insurrection and sedition and that he incited violence. He's not charged with any of it. But they keep saying 
insurrection. It's amazing. Those charges are completely concocted. Completely concocted. Let's move on to the documents case, where we're told, that's the real case. What do you mean it's the real case? You raise another constitutional issue. I started it. Let me continue. A president has unfettered power to classify or declassify anything. He is the executive branch, not the secretary of state, not anybody at the National Archives, not at the CIA. None of them are in the Constitution. The president is the executive branch. He can delegate power by his own actions. He can take the power back. If there's no president, there is no cabinet officer and all the rest that don't exist in the Constitution. But he didn't, he didn't declassify. We don't have any record of it. He took the document with him. So effectively, certainly impliedly, he declassified the document. He didn't say, I'm taking the document so they can charge me with a crime. How stupid is that? But even more, Hillary Clinton was in charge. She was never president. Joe Biden, scores of felonies. When he was a senator, private citizen, when he was vice president, you understand when he met with that ghostwriter and gave that ghostwriter classified information, you know what that was? Joe Biden sold it effectively, not to the ghostwriter, but to the publisher. They gave him an $8 million advance. He had to come up with something. I've got information and they don't know it. That's what he did. He essentially sold classified information for $8 million. That's what he did. Now, we can't charge him. He's an imbecile. An imbecile? Wow. But he could be president. We can have imbeciles as president. That's perfectly fine. The Espionage Act has never been used against a president passed in 1917, never been used against an ex-president, never been used against an ex-secretary of state, never been used against an ex-vice president, wasn't used against Bill Clinton when he was hiding classified information on videos in his sock drawer. Again, not used against Hillary Clinton in the 30,000 times she violated the act. Or so, oh, Mark, she didn't. Oh, we'll quibble over the numbers, right? Or the scores of times Biden violated the law since 1976. He stole classified information out of the Senate's gift. They have cameras. So you know what he had to do? He literally had to do this, or pull a Sandy Berger and put it down his pants, or whatever the hell he did. That's what he did. And he violated the Espionage Act every time he moved the records, put it in his briefcase, went to this house, the rental home, went here, went there, kept them open. That is a slam dunk case, a slam dunk case. But Trump, they say the difference is obstruction. What we have here is a setup. You don't get a warrant, send an FBI SWAT team to a former president's home to grab documents. How do I know that? I'm the only person on this network, or almost any network, who was chief of staff to an attorney general. I know you've had Bill Barr say things. I mean an attorney general like Ed Meese. You know what he would have done? He would have said, you want me to send my guys into a federal court to get a criminal warrant? against a former president over documents? You know what kind of constitutional issues that'll raise? You know what kind of impact that'll have on the future election? I'm not gonna set fires all over the place. Let me give him a call. That's what he would have done. How do I know? I used to sit next to the man. If that didn't work, he still would have done something else, gone civilly with the matter. There is no way in hell he would have done what Biden obviously was encouraging his attorney general to do or the rogue attorney general did. What else has the totalitarian Democrat Party done? Well, their surrogates tried to take Trump off the ballot with some cockamamie interpretation of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which was always bizarre. But hey, anything that can work, so they tried to do that. So what else have they done? Well, my first guest, the congressman leading the investigation of the January 6th committee, Congressman Loudermilk, the January 6th committee destroyed massive amounts of information, manipulated witnesses, censored certain witnesses, only put out information they wanted, covered up exculpatory information that they didn't want to provide, and took the most important piece of evidence Donald Trump had to prove that he had nothing at all to do with any riot, any violence, any sedition, any insurrection, which would completely destroy the Democrat Party and their media's narrative. He did, in fact, offer the National Guard. He did, in fact, offer 10,000 members. He did, in fact, the night before, 
January 6. Call the acting Secretary of Defense, Christopher Miller, and say again, do you guys have enough resources and so forth? It actually happened. And yet Liz Cheney and that committee has continued to say it never happened. They're lying. The whole argument that's been going on and on, repetition of the big lie, is totalitarian. That Trump led an insurrection. They don't have a syllable of evidence to support it. Not a thing, which is why he's not charged with it, which is why, in the end, the Senate had to find him not guilty of it. Nothing. Their goal is to imprison Donald Trump so Biden has a clear field. That's why you charge somebody with 91 felonies in four different jurisdictions. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.